My name is Said Reddy, lecturer in Botany, SRN BGNR, Government Degree and PG College. Come on. So, today we will discuss about shelf life. Shelf life are flower sour tomato. Flower sour tomato. So, transgenic plants. So, what is transgenic plants? So, the transfer of desirable genes from one plant species to another plant species. Is called plant transgenesis. So such plant is called as transgenic plant. So for the first time, FDA in USA, Food and Drugs Administration in USA develops a transgenic tomato plant that is flower sour tomato. So Food and Drugs Administration in USA develops a transgenic plants is named as flower sour tomato. Okay, so what steps involving in this process? So first we should select the tomato, normal tomato plants. So that is tomato plant. So there are three genes, desired genes isolated from this tomato plant. That is PTOM5, second one PTOM6, third one PTOM13. PTOM5, PTOM6 and PTOM. 30. So, PTOM5 gene encodes the enzyme pyrimidine synthase. So, this pyrimidine synthase is involved in the synthesis of lycopene, a pigment. And second one is PTOM6. So, the PTOM6 encodes the enzyme polygalactronase. So, this polygalactronase enzyme involved in cell wall degradation. The third one, PTOM13. So the PTOM13 gene encodes the enzyme ACC oxidase. So this ACC oxidase involved in the synthesis of ethylene. Involved in the synthesis of ACC oxidase. Okay. And next one. So first we should select the normal tomato plant. So in this tomato plant, isolated three genes that is PTOM5, PTOM6, PTOM3. So the three genes isolated from tomato plant and inserted into another tomato plants. So automatically the tomato plant will be converted into transgenic tomato plants. So that means the desirable genes, the three genes inserted into tomato plant through a vector. So first one, so this entire technique is based on antisense mRNA approach. Antisense mRNA approach. So first one. The normal tomato plant, first we should select the normal tomato plant, then a segment of DNA isolated from this plant. So that is fifth prime to third frame direction DNA strand. So this DNA strand encodes the enzyme PG, polygalactronase. So then the polygalactronase DNA segment inserted into bacterium, that is vector bacterium, that is especially E. coli, H. ratio coli. Then this bacterium DNA and this DNA stomata plant DNA integrated to form complementary DNA. So this complementary DNA inserted into normal tomato plant. Automatically this tomato plant they will convert it into transgenic tomato plants. So here the DNA strands encodes the enzyme PG. So the PG DNA strand encodes to sense mRNA, sense mRNA, okay. Next, this sense mRNA involved in the formation of fruit, involved in the formation of fruit, then this sense mRNA, okay. So here this cDNA does not code for any PGG. So this cDNA codes for antisense mRNA. So this sense mRNA and antisense mRNA both fused to form another DNA strand. So this strands, so that is sense mRNA neutralized. So that is ineffective. So that's why this DNA strand does not code for any PG. So no poly polygalactronics. Then automatically no fruit ripening. So, so it is antisense mRNA approach. So shelf life means a length of time a packaged food, a length of time a packaged food or 
delaying of fruit ripening. So, what is the main functions of fruit ripening? So, that is re increased respiration. Automatically, they involve in the formation of ethylene. And second one is the green color of the fruit disappear. Then the fruit get appear red color, red pig pigmented in the presence of lycopene, a red pigment. Then the fruit get automatically softened. So that is in the presence of oligo electronic enzyme, the cell wall is smoothed. So it is shelf life. So what is the main delaying of fruit ripening? So that is the long transport distance may be easily without damaging to fruit. So it is about shelf life.